Hello everyone, today I'm going to give you a quick behind the scenes and tutorial of the dissertation Simulation of Physical Space Acoustics Using Convolution Reverb in Unreal Engine that I've written over the past 2-3 months. So in essence, I'll just quickly go through how you can bring your own impulse responses in Unreal Engine and how to use this to create your own reverberation of a space. We'll do this using a Neo Beta feature from Unreal Engine called Convolution Reverb. You have to check, usually this is already done by default, is but you go to Settings, Plugins, and just quickly type in DSP. And you want to make sure that the Synthesis and DSP effects plugin is enabled, because that's what you're going to need for all the Convolution Reverb um, assets. So if this is enabled, you probably have to restart the engine real quick. Then we'll be ready to go. So the first thing you need, um, something that you need before Unreal Engine is a recording of your space reverberation. Now you can find a lot of tutorials online on uh, how to record your own space reverberation. So go ahead and check that out. First things you do once you have that space reverberation, open up something like Vox Central Deconvolver and we have it here. Um, you load in your tone file that you, the sweep that you've played in the room. And then you also load in that recorded version, that recorded space reverberation. You can do some settings like MP transform or normalizing in Voxential Deconvolver. Um, you have to kind of experiment with this and see what gives you the best result. For me, that was using MP transform and normalizing just to make sure that everything is at a good um, loudness. Alright, so next up, when you press process, um, you'll get an impulse response out of this Voxentio Deconvolver. And this impulse response is the, immediately what we need. So, I'll quickly drag in. You, you grab your impulse response and you'll just drag that into the engine. So I'm going to drag it in here. And we're going to actually see that if I, if I play this, hopefully it's not too loud we kind of get the impulse response of this room. So, cool, we now have an audio file in there, but one of the first things I like to do is I like to open up the settings of this audio file and I like to set the compression to 100. So what does 100 mean? 100 is basically the maximum quality. I first thought this was the maximum compression, but if you hover over it, you see that 100 is the maximum quality, which is what we want in these cases. It's just to make sure that we're not losing any frequencies or that we're having any problems in the future of having like compressed audio. All right, so once we set this to 100, there's nothing really more we need to do. All we need to do is right click this file um, and you will see in your menu create impulse response. So click create impulse response and you'll see that you get this extra asset that we can use. So now we have an impulse response. Next up what we kind of want to do is we want to make a convolution reverb preset asset. So how do we do that? We go to sound, you go to effect and submix effect preset that's what we want we want this submix effect preset click on this and you'll see the first preset in the line in the classes is um, submix effect convolution reverb preset so we want to kind of grab this one press select and we can call this whatever we want i'm just going to call it tutorial submix effect preset convolution reverb doesn't really matter right um you call this whatever you want so when we open that up, we see a few settings that we can do, but I don't, I wouldn't really play with these settings. These are kind of unnecessary. All we got to do is set our impulse response here and I'll just drag it. Um, the impulse response we made earlier, the asset, drag it into there and that's done. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Next up, what we'll do is we'll make a sound mix and this sound mix is going to use this preset to send the audio through this preset. So to make a submix, all we'll do is we'll go to mix in the menu. So sounds mix and create a new sound submix. So again, this is, you can completely choose yourself what you want to call these things. Um, I'll just call it sound submix underscore um, 
<clears throat> convolution, right? So open this up and again, it's very simple. All you got to do is you go to this section here, the submix effect chain. Um, and we'll just kind of press the plus button. So add an element and then put this tutorial submix effect preset that we just made, drag it into here. And there we go. Next up, after we got this convolution um, sound submix, we want to kind of play this submix. Now there's a multitude of ways to do this. However, what I like to do when you're going for realistic sound, try to mm, use attenuation because it helps a lot creating realistic sound. In essence, if you don't want to use attenuation, what you do is you go to settings, project settings, you can type in reverb and then in the reverb submix, you can just gra grab your sound submix convolution that you just made and then all the audio is sent through that reverberation submix. Um, but I like using uh, attenuation. So what I recommend you to do is create an attenuation asset. So cool, we'll be creating an attenuation asset. Click on the attenuation asset and we'll just call this um, t attenuation tutorial. So now we have an attenuation asset and all you want to do for this attenuation asset, you will see that there's already a few things enabled and I won't really go through the settings. I'll show you later on what settings I use um, in this um, demo that I made for my dissertation. Um, but in essence, all you want to do is enable the submix send. And once that's enabled, you want to press a pl the plus button on the submix send settings open that up and you'll see that you can here drag your submix into there. So that's exactly what you're going to do. Just drag it in there and all the rest is kind of fine how it is. And so now we're pretty much ready to feed um, our audio through this attenuation asset and it will go down the line. So it goes from this attenuation asset to the sound submix, which will instigate that convolution reverb preset, which will use the audio impulse response that we made. Um, and that was converted from this audio sample. So all we got to do is make a new blueprint class of an actor and we call it like source, uh, whatever. Uh, so that's your source audio actor. Um, and all you want to do is you add either a little visualization like a sphere or whatever. Let's do a cube this time because I already have one with a sphere. Um, and then what you want to do is add an audio component to this cube. And once you have that, all you're going to do is you go to sound here. You can place whatever sound you want to pl play, right? So you can get, have like a guitar sample or whatever. doesn't really matter. You can change this real time, by the way. And then you will see a section here, allow spatialization. Make sure that's on. And then attenuation settings, just go to here and grab your attenuation that you just made. So you can either select it from the menu or you can drag it in like this. And so that's basically all we're doing. And now once we place that cube into here and it plays the audio, then we will hear it through that submix. So this is basically the basic setup and I'll show you the result right now, but I don't want to do it with what we created just now, because a lot of this is changing the settings and changing up how all these attenuation, etc., works together. So I'll quickly give a rundown of how it looks uh, for me in the end result that I created. So very simple. I put this to natural sound. It's like a mix between logarithmic and linear as, as far as I remember, but don't take my word for it. There's enough in the documentation to give you kind of more info about that. So some of the settings that I changed is fall of distance. It's just how far uh, your attenuation volume will register. And then spatialization speaks for itself. I have some 3D stereo spread just to make sure that it sounds like you're having a stereo source rather than a single source. It helps a little bit with the spatialization in headphones uh, in particular. Enable air absorption, it's how the air absorbs sound and you can kind of simulate that and have cutoff frequencies. The further you go away from the ball, the more the low end is cut off and stuff like that. So yeah, just make sure that reverb send is on. Uh, 
enable the occlusion if you want like walls to block the audio then occlusion is really important uh, you can see some settings here but like i said uh, it's a lot of experimentation and then all you do is enable that sub mix and add your sound mix to it like we did before and then there's some settings that i changed here although i think most of them are still at the same levels and the same uh settings as they are normally so if you can go really quickly to something like um, our audio here we'll see that in my audio impulse response so i i, I made an impulse response right um and i can open it up uh, via here i put true stereo on it helps with spatialization as well because else sometimes you have a feeling that all the sound is only coming from one direction obviously with reverberation you would also have the feeling that reverberation would come from the walls so true stereo really helps with that and then we normalize uh, a little bit more this is all depending on how hard you want your convolution reverb to come through so this is basically the whole process and then if we take a listen to everything together so this this ball is literally just what i showed you before it sends the audio through that attenuation asset and yeah, all the rest is just as I showed you before with the sound mix uh, going through the convolution preset, which has the impulse response. So yeah, let's take a listen how that looks, uh, or rather how that um, hears. <laughs> go next to wall you will hear it a lot less so let's maybe try and do the drum um, it's a nice example you can really hear the reverberation now in the room let's go behind the wall Alright, so that's basically it. Uh, this is like a really, really rough rundown of how you can implement something like Convolution Reverb in the engine uh, of Unreal Engine. And yeah, I think this will change a little bit up in the future since it's still all beta features or at least most of them are still beta features. So take that into account. This was made with uh, Unreal Engine 4.26.0. So take that into account. Um, but that's basically it. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. And I hope you've learned something and you can now add convolution reverb in your projects.